So today I would like to give you a glimpse of innovations in the Indian space program. It's really a glimpse because there is so much to tell me in some of the time. I can tell that. So I would like to tell you an ambitious program, like space program in India, how it started and what was the innovation involved in that. It was still the traumatic time of post-partition in India of the independence. A lot of struggle was going on and we had our friendly neighbors already who had waged wars on us and we had shortage of food, we had to import food and we are a young nation, independent nation, already our constitution was drawn which was you know, applauded all over and could we stand up to the standards of what was started in the constitution and there was an ambition and our leaders understood it was science and technology which can take forward. The first Prime Minister of India, as he rightly told, science will be the religion of India. And he also told that the public sectors which were set up at that point of time uh, to bring in the technology and uh, improvement in life will be the temples of India. What a statement. And at that point, it was something wonderful that was happening. The post-World War, what happened is that a lot of innovations happened, a lot of science and technology came in and the World War brought in the rocketry. It was called V2 rockets. The V2 rockets from Germany, you know, the maker of the V2 rocket, Von Braun, he moved to USA and a lot of the rocket making facilities went into the then USSR territory. So both had a wonderful opportunity to develop and it married the important thing of uh, space sciences and the, uh, you know, uh, also the exploratory nature of what was going on. And that is how they started and we were nowhere but in 1961 and uh, there was a proposition that we must start the Indian Space Program and it started as the Indian Committee for the Space Research and how we could do that, how could we convince that was so innovative that Vikram Sarabhai, the father of space in India, he brought in a very simple vision as you just now you heard, very simple vision. We have to bring the advanced technology for the betterment of the humanity here, for the common man. We are not going to race against USA or USSR, no. We are doing our own job for the betterment of the people. So that is how we started in a very simple manner. And very soon there was a strategy, there was alliances which were formed, who were actually enemies in the world and who were having the old war. But here they were their alliances for us, both of them, and we could bring them together and we could establish our first launch site in the terms in Tumba and it was also dedicated to the United Nations and the whole world was looking at us and application was always first, next one please so always application first so whatever was the stream, communication, remote sensing, navigation or exploration we started on the applications and that is how the programs like you know uh, the, we took the USA satellite APS-6 those days for about a year brought in how to do the television program in India and it benefited huge number of people and many people got trained on science background etc. And then remote sensing, so even with the aerial data developed a lot of the ground software and you know you had to do that kind of ground work before we really went into our own growth whether it is communication, remote sensing, navigation but at the same time we had the bread and butter of any science, mind, science, scientific minded person that we had to do exploration in a modest way. India also has gone ahead with that. And the Indian launches today, we have good amount of uh, lining up with various kind of rockets and lot of uh, development is also going on. So how did it happen? So basically you need to be innovative. I must tell you an example that it was post-Pokhran and you know, the post-Karkil situation 
wherein we needed to bring in a, uh, really a, an eye in the sky. So that is when, you know, we also had a ban that many of the technologies were not available to us. We did not have, we were not able to get the components required for building what we wanted to do. But it is like this statement, it is not about the resources, it is the resourcefulness. That was a blessing in disguise that we brought in 11 new technologies in a satellite called Technology Experiment Satellite. A satellite which could dance in the sky and which, you know, proved a lot of indigenous technologies for us, algorithms for us, and that was a wonderful experience we went through. Like that, there are many examples. I will just uh, go to the next slide. I just want to give you some out of the box, one or two examples. Why everywhere the communication was going on with, you know, uh, either for broadcast, or we have a satellite for the weather, or we have a satellite for, uh, you know, uh, uh, telecommunication. These kind of activities when we were going, we could not afford. We had to be very resourceful. So we started building the satellites. India started building the satellites, putting combined applications. We don't have so much of resource, but we could put combined applications, and it was first time in the world that India brought satellites with multiple applications and common platform. That was a wonderful idea. So the basic thing, what we wanted for broadcasting, telecom, or weather, search and rescue operations, disaster management, weather monitoring, all of these things could be brought together and it was a great uh, success. And similarly, navigation. Every space-faring country, every country which aspires for technological advancement today have their own navigation satellite system. Similarly, India also had to bring in. You all know about the GPS, right? So when you have a navigation satellite, they go around the globe like GPS or GLONASS. Then it is obvious that we need to put many satellites around the globe and you need to have permissions from all over the country to be into signals. And here we were. We were not, you know, having that kind of resource. But again, we brought in a wonderful constellation for regional navigation. That is called Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System. Our Honorable Prime Minister named it as Navi, Navigation by Indian Constellation. So just with the seven satellites, India and 1500 kilometers all around, we had our own navigation system. Today, our uh, you know, uh, strategic systems, where they are using it, they are utilizing the navigation system, that was the main purpose. And in addition to that, a lot of commercial applications are also coming, uh, whether it is in the aircrafts, or uh, whether it is, uh, you know, your telephones very soon, many of the companies will be coming with a chipset, including these signals also. Yes. So, we had our simple PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Breaker, which was meant to take around 1,000-1,200 kg satellite, 600 to 800 kilometers of OER, and we stretched it. It's always about how much you can stretch uh, your, you know, abilities, and make sure that you can achieve. So this simple rocket, it took a satellite which reached the moon, Chandrayaan-1, and that was a satellite which was in input by PSLV, which has found a new nebula 9.3 billion years ago, uh, uh, 9.3 billion light years away from Earth, and the way how it is, we could do that, and it has also you know, noticed many gamma ray bursts, and it has, seen, it has detected many dark holes and it has been a wonderful instrument for scientists all over the world today. And we are going to have one more wonderful operation called Aditya that also is originally planned to be our PSA. We hope it goes that way that we will be putting for the observatory of for the sun that we will be putting at a point called Lagrange in uh, um, you know, uh, space. Whenever there are two bodies, there are always certain points where they give balance of each other's attractions, pulls and pushes. Such points, a French scientist found as Lagrange, he found these points at Lagrange point between Sun and Earth. We are using Lagrange point one to put a satellite called Aditya. So, self-reliance versus the self-sufficiency 
as you see today, there is a confidence across the countries in the world that they can put their satellites in us as much as we have been taking to them too. So all the capacity which can match with our TSLVs, capacity which can match with our GSLV. We have so many satellites from 34 countries. We have launched them so far. And whole lot of thematic satellites all over which are gone. And whether it is communication, we have the high throughput satellites and we have linked everywhere around the India, nooks and corners, whether it is uh, remote sensing, we have wonderful applications, there is no department which is not benefited today by the space application. And the most important thing was all these things, next slide you can go please, all these things are not necessarily done by ISRO, this is done by Team India. So that was another wonderful innovation that the planning uh, of the entire operations was done in such a way that these application departments and Department of Space were brought together, discuss their needs and how do we educate them and how do we take input from them. You can give a wonderful appliance, but if nobody knows how to use it or if they are not using it, it's a waste. It's not happened. So, together it has been done and wonderful initiatives like Village Resource Center wherein lot of uh, you know, uh, separated the applications are all brought together in a gram panchayat or a school there so that the common you can directly uh, disseminate the information to the farmers, the fishermen whose life has tremendously improved as they know exactly where they can go for their catch and fishermen who know where not to cross the borders and get into the prisons in the other countries and just with a signal, disaster warning and they are there and the satellite gets a signal and then uh, they get the rescue needed. All these applications together we brought as a EOS and it was a wonderful experiment and you people might have heard about telemedicine and teleeducation which connected for the first time in India thousands, tens of thousand classrooms which were brought in and uh, many of those uh, pilot programs developed uh, uh, into great programs like IGNU for example. It started from one of the pilot program called the Jehovah Communication Program. So these kind of programs have taken. Today it's ubiquitous. Wherever you take every way satellite application is there and satellite become has become an important tool in the process. As we dreamt, as the vision was there, applications have been brought down. The technological applications have been brought out to the common man to better his life and stand, you know, with I think nearly 200 countries might be there nearly and we are one of the very major space sharing country and that is the pride we have. Thank you all for your kind attention.